The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law, and today we're going to answer the question, what happens if co-trustees disagree in Illinois? So a reader asked the following question in the comments section of our blog. I'm a co-trustee with three other trustees. The trust document states that property should be maintained for the benefit of the beneficiaries. If three trustees do not want to repair a roof and one wants to repair the roof, what does Illinois law say about that? So we basically have a situation where one trustee wants to repair a property, three don't, and we have a disagreement. Let's first talk about, before we answer that, what the pros and cons of having multiple trustees for your trust are. The trustee is the person responsible for acting for the benefit of the beneficiaries according to the terms of the trust. Uh, and they have to do a lot of things. They may have to open up bank accounts. They may have to transfer property, sell property, distribute property to beneficiaries, manage investments. Uh, so the advantage of having multiple trustees is that they place a check and balance on one another, kind of like the three branches of government. The idea is that you preserve the status quo unless the majority of trustees are in agreement. The downside is that having multiple trustees provides an extra level of complication. Trustees often have to be in the same place uh, to do things like open bank accounts or engage in real estate transactions. And the more trustees you have, the more difficult this is. It's a logistical problem if you have multiple trustees. Probably more importantly, if trustees disagree, this may lead to costly litigation, and we'll explain how that works in just a second. So let's talk about what happens if trustees are deadlocked on an issue. The language of the trust controls trustee decision-making, so it will provide what actions trustees can take unilaterally, what actions require a majority vote, and what actions might require unanimity. So for our reader question, what happens if three trustees want to not repair a roof and one trustee does? Well, it depends on what the trust says. Is this the type of thing that you just need a majority vote for? In that case, the, th the three trustees uh, would win out and the roof wouldn't be, be repaired. Uh, or is it the type of thing that requires a unanimous decision? If it requires a unanimous decision, this might be the type of thing where the status quo is m maintained and the roof doesn't get repaired. Um, but we'll kind of look at what happens if it's something that actually needs a decision to be made one way or another unanimously. So if the trust is silent and the trustees are deadlocked, uh, and this may or may not be a deadlock situation de uh, depending on the terms of the trust, the language of the trust again controls what happens to resolve that deadlock. Uh, the trust might provide that the status quo remains if the trustees are deadlocked. So unless there's a majority vote or a unilateral, or I'm sorry, a unanimous decision, then the status quo will remain and the deadlock doesn't have to be broken if the trust says so. The trust might provide that a third party or tiebreaker will take place and this might be the beneficiaries, it might be somebody else that the, uh, the creator of the trust trusted to break any ties. It also might provide that the trustees submit their dispute to mediation to try to resolve it or to arbitration which is an alternative dispute resolution mechanism. If the trust is silent, the trustees may want to negotiate a solution, basically negotiate who's going to break their tie, rather than submit the dispute to litigation because that's kind of the next phase. So if the trust is silent on how a deadlock will be broken and the trustees aren't able to negotiate a solution, then the trustees or the beneficiaries can file a petition with the probate, uh, probate court to have the dispute resolved. There will be an evidentiary hearing at which both sides of the dispute can provide evidence and arguments as to why they what they want to do is in the best interest of the beneficiaries uh, according to the terms of the trust. The court will resolve the issue if a decision, decision would be necessary to effectuate the terms of the trust. And generally, the court will go with whatever action is most beneficial to the beneficiaries uh, and also comports with what the grantor of the trust, the trust creator, intended for the trust. So it's not just what's beneficial for the beneficiaries, but it's what the grantor's intent was in creating the trust as well. And the court will decide the issue on, based on that standard. If a trustee is no longer fulfilling his or her fiduciary duty to act for the benefit of the beneficiaries according to the trust, then the other trustees or the beneficiaries can file a petition to have him or her removed as trustee and replaced uh, with somebody else. 
So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below this post at learn-about-law.com or below the video on our YouTube station. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to us on YouTube, SoundCloud, or Apple Podcasts, or wherever you uh, listen to your podcasts or watch your videos. If you need some help, give us a call at 630-324-6666. That's 630-324-6666. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have offices all over the place for your convenience. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.